this uh, is a memoir, it's my life story, you know, for the first 25 years of my life. Uh, the book was comprised of uh, uh, my upbringing in the streets, running around with the bloods and uh, home issues with my mother, dysfunctional family, uh, not growing up with a father. Uh, so I pretty much put all of that into a story to kind of reveal to the world, you know, who I was and, and a lot of things that I had gone through that led me to the point, you know, to get into a lot of the issues and troubles that I had gotten into. But ultimately, you know, what motivated me to want to change. That's one thing I wanted to ask you. Like, um, <clears throat> what made you turn to gang life? Well, the, the most simplest way to answer that is that I was young and I didn't have a family. You know, I moved into a neighborhood that was gang infected. Uh, I was the new kid. Uh, you know, my mother, I, I didn't have my mother at the time. We moved in with relatives and, uh, you know, when you, you know, when you moving into a new neighborhood, you know, I think one thing we all children want us to fit in. You know, and, and I, I was a victim of that. It just so happened where I moved to it was ran by gangs. So the people you had to fit in with were gang members. Mm. And, uh, you know, it was, it was definitely a culture shock for me because that was my first introduction to gang life. I mean, you know, where I was from, you know, we had neighborhoods and little crews and blocks and things like that, but nothing to the the magnitude of a sh organized structure, you know, gang life, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So that, that was definitely different for me. And, uh, you know, I always felt, you know, two and three steps behind. And uh, I had a lot of issues growing up, man. I moved out there to uh, Phoenix, Arizona when I was nine years old. Mm -hmm. And I was, uh, I had a lot of anger at a young age. I was very angry. I had a lot of questions about uh, myself that I, that I couldn't get answers. I had questions about my mother. I had questions about a father that I had never met. You know, so uh, it just it kind of left me. Uh, I always said like a feather in the wind. You know, I was just you know all over the place. You know, I was I had, my, my my foundation was not stable, so I was easily influenced by a lot that was around me. Do you feel that like I know you you moved uh, from one place to another? I remember when I read your book, you moved to a couple of different places. Do you feel like that kind of life kind of followed you around, or did you seek trouble out when you moved, or like I just you know I only ask because I know I read it in your book, and I have a, a cousin who is also a blood, and it's like no matter where my aunt moves this boy, he seems to find trouble wherever he goes. I just like what is the fascination? Well, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say it was a fascination for me. I always say once the seed is planted, it can it's be watered anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, so it wasn't so much that I went place to place looking for trouble, but mm -hmm. I had experienced a lot at a young age, yeah. and that was that created my foundation. You know, mm -hmm. that was the way I ended up viewing things and my perception of the world, and that was through violence. I equated, you know, love and respect through violence. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And so, no matter where I went, I knew I always wanted to be respected, and, and the way I I put two and two together was you got that through violence, through hurting people. Yeah, wow, that's deep. I mean, I never thought about it like that at all. And I can tell you honestly, I'm like one of the most judgmental people when it comes to gang members. And I guess because I have so many in my family, and I look at them like you aren't brought up like this. Like it's just crazy to me. But what was like the motivating force behind your transformation? Well, like I mentioned in the book, it wasn't necessarily one thing. It was a combination of a few. One was uh, my daughter, mm -hmm. uh, Deshane. Um, How old is she? She's five now. Mm -hmm. Uh, but at the time, uh, I was in prison in Delaware, Delaware Correctional Center, and uh, I was facing hell of time. And I, mean, I was facing a quarter of a century, and then, and uh, oh. I lost a good friend at the time. Good, good homeboy of mine got got gunned down, and no, and my daughter was was my lady was on her ninth month of her pregnancy. So that was for me. That was a lot to deal with at the time. You know, I I couldn't even properly mourn for my dear homie. I'm facing hella time in prison and I wanted to be free to be a father. So I just think that, you know, everybody has a, di a different rock bottom. You know, I just feel like, you know, circumstances can change perception any day of the week. And those circumstances that I was dealing with at that time, I think it forced me to uh, look at life just a little bit differently. And I knew that the way I was living wasn't, uh, it wouldn't allow me to be the person I wanted to be and I was a father. I wanted to be a father. I didn't want to raise my daughter from no, no prison cell. Mm. I didn't want to, you know, have her come and visit me. So. You know, I wouldn't necessarily say that I changed at that point, but I just think that the the light went off at that point. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and fortunate enough for me, I was able to get out of that situation. I got, I came home, and uh, that's really where the foundation came for my change. So, is that when you started to write your book when you were in prison? Yes, I uh, being in a hole uh, left me with nothing but time to do nothing. So uh, that's why I began writing. You know, until you've been locked down like that. You'll never understand how. What do you mean like that? Like how long were you locked down for? 23 hours and 40 minutes a day. Jeez. Being locked in a, it wasn't even a six by nine, it was smaller than that. And uh, 
I did a lot of writing in there and I did a lot of reading. You know, those those things became survival tools. Yeah. You know, because you can easily feel those walls closing in on you. You know, you can you can drive yourself crazy in there. So, you know, you you you're reaching and you're trying to find something just to occupy your time, you know, mm -hmm. to take your mind off of actually where you are. And that's really why I got in tune with the writing. I mean I a lot of people say, you know, they thought that I that I was always a writer and I said, No, nah, I never I never, you know, pursued writing is is but under those circumstances, it forced me to want to write, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, it killed a lot of time for me, mm -hmm. and it helped me get in tune with, with who I was, you know, and also even with the reading, I read, like, I read all day, every day, you know, I, I mean, I took advantage of that time while I was in there, so, uh, I mean, I always say that, you know, there can be blessings in the midst of the fires, and that was one for and me, I because I, I definitely discovered something that I was, that I enjoyed doing, I was writing and even reading, so, uh, something did, good came out of that situation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about Full Throttle. That's your nonprofit organization, right? I know I met some of the guys earlier when you were doing your shoot. Right. Tell me a little about it. Uh, Full Throttle, uh, I, I started it in this past December mm -hmm. of '09, of And it's just comprised of, uh, I started it with 12 of the little active YGs in my neighborhood, little Pyro homies. Mm -hmm. And I handpicked uh, pretty much the 12 most active ones. Um, and you mean I, like gang active, active mean, like yeah, banging? Ones, yeah, active. And you uh, were able to tame them? Well, you know what I say is law. So, oh um, I I handpicked the, the twelve most active ones that I you know that I felt that that would be a challenge for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I came up with the, the, the name Full Throttle because that it, it had a negative meaning at one time. And Full Throttle for us, I mean, really meant was, you know. I can I can say I curse on this man. I, mean, I don't want to go off, but I mean, I, you know, it's the way we say. Say it. whatever you want. Full throttle, man. Get that shit done. Bottom line, when that when you heard full throttle, that meant you got that shit done, and that's something that they they understand. They they, they when they hear that, you know, it's something they stand on with pride from a negative perspective. And I I'm, I'm real big on turning negatives into positives. Mm -hmm. You know, the lemon life give you lemons, you can make lemonade. I'm real big on on taking something that was near and dear to you from a negative perspective. And, and, and letting that be the motivating factor to do something positive. So I didn't want to come up with just a generic name for the group. I wanted something that they once rode, ride and die for. And, and full throttle now just means that you go full throttle for change. You know, just as hard as you was out there busting niggas' asses, mm -hmm. now you out there, you know, you're fighting for your survival, you're fighting for your freedom, you're fighting for your health and your peace of mind. And uh, that's what full throttle means, is everything that, that we used to do now we're trying to make change i mean we still have to live in the jungle we still live they still live in the neighborhood that much hasn't changed but i just try to help them fight to reserve a, a good portion of their sanity a good portion of of the possibility of the things that do that can exist or that can happen for them in their lives why do they still have to live here because mm -hmm. it's easy to tell them you know not to do this and not to do that but they still have to they walk still the streets face with the same they still obstacles. have to walk to school they still have to you know go to the, the, the to to shop right and to the corner store they still have to live here you know so but I just feel there has to be a balance uh, to the madness mm -hmm. you know and that's something that I try to bring we sit down we have open dialogue discussions I mean we really tear into the meat the core of the anger that a lot of us dealing with I mean I have a tattoo on my neck the pain is profit and a lot of us dealing with that pain mm -hmm. but now my, my, my MO now is how do we find a way to turn that into profit and I'm not even talking about money profit I'm talking about is not even money the mm -hmm. profit is the peace of mind the profit is the fact that you can, you do believe you can be something. A lot of us feel like we ain't shit, we ain't never gonna be shit. And when you're dealing with an individual like that, that's when it becomes hopeless. Yeah. You know, so I, I do my best to try to at least instill that 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 what if in them, you know, to, to, to make them feel that they can be something, that they, that they are somebody. And, and I mean, it, it's tough. It's, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do when you're dealing with, you know, 15, 16, 17 of your cats who feel like they don't care about shit. Shit yeah. don't mean shit to them. You know, it's, it's difficult, but I use the influence that I got to try to, you know, facilitate, you know, uh, the s settings for them where they can get something out of these events. The exposure that I get them traveling, just being here, coming mm -hmm. here. This is not something that the average little homie from don't get to do. Mm -hmm. Being in front of cameras and people, you know, actually taking an interest in them. And they look like they enjoy they, it so that's, much. That's not something that we have access to like that. So mm -hmm. these, these are morale boosters for them. And, They're looking uh, to expand it, your company? Yes, I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'll be honest with you. I, I've I've been asked quite a bit to you know uh, merge with different organizations and things like that, and I, I personally choose not. I'm to I'm not even it. saying merge. Right. I mean, just 
and do you yeah. and just make it so much bigger. Because you know I say that a lot of these uh, these young guys, like your little homies, they see you have the same same background as them. So you know you can reach them in a way that nobody else can. Sure. Just like you know what I witnessed on Brick City, I wanted to get in touch with Jada because I noticed she can reach out to these young girls like nobody else can because they don't understand these young girls. You know you can tell them do this and you can tell them do that, but if you've never been in their shoes, you don't know exactly what they're facing. You know what I mean? So I think you have like. And you 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 can just reach them so much better than anybody else can, and I think that's great. I think you should expand your company. And I'm not even well, talking about merging uh, anybody else. I mean, the, the, the reason why I mentioned that was that uh, I, I'm glad that I I I, I'm, uh, I keep it independent. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't. The reason why I even began to say that is because I don't want to compromise my methods and how I deal with it. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to come up under anybody's mission statements mm -hmm. and policies. You know, you know, I I, I call myself a non-traditional leader, like. What I do may not be the the, 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 the typical way things mm -hmm. get done, but I'm effective at what I do. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I like to kind of stay in, in my lane with that. And you so, know what works. Absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the inside. I, I see what's going on. And uh, like I said, we started with 12. But I have a registry now of about 30 youngsters, a, a, a good 30 now that's waiting to become full throughout them. A lot that's of them great. come to me through their parents. and uh, But I chose to kind of stay with 12 until I get the foundation set mm -hmm. with those 12. And, and and so if even if I'm not present, if I'm not there, that the full throttle can continue to move on. Mm -hmm. You know that's why I chose not to really open up the doors to just uh, 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 a lot of numbers mm -hmm. because then it become chaos. And yeah. I want to get the foundation set. And but yes, definitely I will expand this. Believe that. So as crazy as things are, and as I mean, I know you at least pick up a paper or watch the news or something. You know how chaotic things are in the streets. As crazy as they are, do you think you'll be able to make a big enough impact? Well, when you say big enough impact, and big enough impact to do what? I mean, like, to help these young guys change. I guess the way I answer that is I've made an impact on my group. And, mm -hmm. you know, I've made impacts on people's lives that I probably never met. But when you look at the, the vastness of, of this situation, one person can never do it. I don't believe it's going to happen because it's, for every me, you got a thousand people that don't give a shit about what I'm doing. You got cats on the street that they wake up ready to die. So I, 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 I it's, 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 it's a difficult question when you say, will it make an impact as far as the whole situation? I just feel like I, 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 I have a slice in that, man. I, mm -hmm. I think I, ha I do have an impact, but to the effect of stopping things and, you know, it has to be more people willing to do what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I think it's always like a team effort, you know. Yeah. One person cannot win the game. You know, has to, everybody has to pull a roll their sleeves back, you know what I'm saying, and, 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 and do their part. Yeah. You know, but I, but I do I, I do know that I have made some change out here around this country, mm -hmm. uh, and I'll continue to keep doing it. Okay, that's great. I have to say, I watched Brick City, just like a million others, and I don't know if you know this, but you are like a humongous sex symbol in New Jersey, and I had no clue until I was telling people that I was going to be interviewing you, and I can't tell you how many people are like, oh my God! Make sure you tell Joey I said hi. So I have one request as this interview is coming to a close. Can you please tell Shayna to the camera? Shayna? Shayna. Can okay. you please tell Shayna hi? Okay, uh, Shayna, you're out there. I'm sure you're going to be watching this. I just want to say what's happening with you, and I'm sure I'll meet you soon. <laughs> Thank you. You've been mm -hmm. great. Thank you, Thank you for you allowing us me. to interview you. I really yeah. enjoyed this. All right. I appreciate Grinders. For having me, man, it's a great opportunity, man. I appreciate it. I'll be back here any time, any day, man, to say the word. You all ready? All right, you guys. You heard it here. It's JT and Jawi. Full throttle status. Yes. Uh, we're out. That's it. <laughs>